listen, we're back and we're back quicker than we thought we would be back because Mel actually came up with a real uh, humdinger. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, you know, this is the great thing about historical criticism. And this is great. Uh, uh, what I love about working with people like Mel and, and, and Murad, they, they keep plugging away. They keep plugging away. And they're always looking at the seventh century and they're looking for new things. And here in way, lo and behold, remember what we said in the last video, that when you put these videos up and as we've been doing, People look at them, they say, hold on a minute, we've seen this before, we know some about this. And then they get in contact with Mel, or they get in contact with Murad or me. And then they say, have you looked at this? Have you looked at this object? Or have you looked at this map? Or have you looked at this inscription? And so we're getting fed an awful lot of new material that's coming from many of you, many of you who are watching us. Thanks for doing that. And you're part of this debate, you're part of this discussion. And what Mel has found is something that he didn't find that others found. And this is something that was going to support what we said earlier. So I've just kept my same shirt on to make it think that we've just kind of continued on from the last one. No, believe me, I have <laughs> taken it off in between the last few days that we've heard there. Mel, there you are. Okay, good. Hi, okay, Jim. Mel. Now, let's get just two of us together. When you Eve texted me earlier this morning, you said, hey, I've got a new bombshell. Something has just come up. Tell us about it. What is this bombshell? What are you talking about? I'm excited. Everybody's excited. We want to know what is it you've come up with. Yeah, so um, just to explain what's happened in the last say, 24 hours, um, I've, I've had a bit of pushback. Some people were questioning my whole thesis, the idea that there is an old Mecca way up in northern Mesopotamia. And like, you know, people thought, well, that's a bit far-fetched. But I, um, someone said that they had looked at a 12th century map and, uh, you know, in those days, you put the most important place right in the center of the map, and then you built the map around that central place. And he says, hey, check out this map. Take a look for yourself. He didn't even tell me. He says, go, go and find it yourself and, and take a look. And I was like, I looked at the map, and I was like, this can't be true. So I, I, I drew diagonal lines across the map, and right in the middle is the old Mecca, as I claimed just yesterday. Right, right, right smack in the middle of, of a map created by a Muslim cartographer from the 12th century. So we're not even so talking about the 8th century. This is a Muslim cartographer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, do you, do you have that map? Can we look at it? Is it possible that we can make it? But before yeah. you do that, before you get into this yeah. map, what I'd like you to do is, for those of you who are initiated, this may be the first time they're looking at this, uh, they may not know what you're talking about, because this idea of a earlier Mecca. Help us, what you're talking about? What do you mean an earlier Mecca? And where are you placing it? Well, perhaps um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you a few slides just to kind of review what we looked at before, just to kind of bring us up to speed. Okay, okay. why don't you do that? And yeah. as, as always, when, when he's uh, putting up and getting to his uh, share screen with his slide, I'm going to go ahead and just keep rattling on, nattering on to make sure that there are no yes, soft spots. There is no, here you are. This is your PowerPoint. Go ahead, Mel. Tell us and get us up to speed as to what we've been looking at. Okay, so in the, in the last video, I, I pointed out that Jacob, the Bishop of Edessa, 684 to 688, he pointed out that the, the Muslims were praying in various different directions, which, which was east of Egypt, north from the southern part of, um, let's say, Petra or Jerusalem. And those in Iraq were praying west, which all pointed to either Petra or Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting because, in particular, what was interesting, he comes from Edessa, but he do doesn't use the word Mecca in the 7th century. So that was... That's where it started off. And this is what I showed you. So this is what he described. He's up there where Ur is on the map, um, called Shanlurfa today in Turkey. And so he's talking about Muslims were praying in that direction, but he doesn't use Mecca. And then I pointed out the following, which is the Byzantine Arabic Chronicle from 741. This is our earliest reference to Mecca. And uh, if you look at the bold part, it says Mecca, as they consider it, the home of Abraham, which lies in the desert between Ur of the Chaldeans and Kara, the city of Mesopotamia, which is another name actually for Haran. Mm -hmm. So this is it here, right in between Edessa and Haran. And uh, yeah, so this is... That's the map on the right. So for people who are looking at, we're looking the at right, the red yeah. areas here. Yeah. 
So where the red arrow uh, is, is where you're pointing to. There is right between, equal between Haran yeah. and Edessa. And as you can see, it's, it's like way up in the s southeastern part of Turkey. So it's not even what we would call Iraq today. It's like way up where you'd least expect it. Yeah. And so discovering this 741 um, chronicle and that it says that Mecca is way up here, it, it was such an anomaly that, it, you know, I was, I was wondering whether is it true? Did they make a mistake? But lo and behold, today I just discovered this map which actually puts this location, Mecca, right in the middle of a world map as this uh, Muslim cartographer drew it way back in the 12th century. So it's very interesting. So, okay. So without further ado, the, the, last, the last thing I would say is that, you know, I, I said that the old Mecca was up by Ur and this, the new Mecca was way down south, just south, south of the old Mecca. And that's as far as I had got as of the last video. So here's the map. Now, the first thing to notice is in this map, the north is on what we would normally consider the southern side. So <laughs> it's actually, just, actually, it's upside down, upside isn't it, down. so to speak. So the north yeah. is south and the south is north. So what the upper arrow, what you're looking at, that white arrow at the top is actually pointing to Arabia, whereas yeah. the southern arrow, the one that you have pointing straight down, that's actually Turkey and, and, and northern yeah. parts of Syria. So if people yeah. could just imagine, we're now looking upside, looking, upside it's down. as if you're in space looking down onto yeah. the earth, but you're looking yeah. at from the North Pole down. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so if that middle arrow just below it would be Turkey, you know, and uh, those lines that I've drawn on the, the picture, I, when I was drawing them, I, I didn't have the benefit of being able to do it right across the screen because the image was such a high resolution image. So all I could do was draw it from the corner to this, to what I, considered might be the center, but wasn't in entirely sure. Um, I literally just drew it to Haran, and lo and behold, when I zoomed out, I discovered actually it just was perfectly in the center, as the person, um, the viewer, had said to me. And look, and look at where Mecca is. It's, it's, in, it's way up there on the upper part of the map in an insignificant so that, that top arrow that we're talking about, that is pointing to Mecca. That's the modern day Mecca. So yeah. that is the new Mecca. And the middle arrow, the one that's pointing uh, into the center, that is the old Mecca. That's the Ur, that's the Haran, uh, that's the Chaldea that you're talking about. Yeah, and actually, interestingly, today, I also received um, other information. Um, someone sent me an email, uh, further information about Ur, and uh, there is... A cave in Ur, which is believed to be the birthplace of Abraham. So, you know, the cave appears a lot in the Islamic tradition in relation to Muhammad. So we have a cave here mentioned. And this is the Hidda nice cave you're referring to. So you're talking about the Hidda cave that's in the traditions where Muhammad supposedly was doing his, he um, was doing his yeah. meditation there uh, for, that was around 610, uh, supposedly according to the traditions. So you're saying yeah. that this is, this again, is another uh, one of these traditions that worked its way down and they put it into the tradition because it's already there. It pre-existed from the Abrahamic thing, which is where that middle arrow would be as well. Yeah. So it, just to give you a zoom in there, so that's the central part. You can see Haran there. It doesn't have the, the name Mecca. We just know that the 741 reference talks about it be, it's been between Ur and Haran, or Kara, as the alternative name is. But there is a strong tradition, as we said, of uh, Ur being the birthplace of Abraham, where he was born. Now, so, just to be fair, Mel, you, you did say yesterday that the, the word Mecca itself means the lowland area. So it could be that that's why the word Mecca was used in description of that area. It's the lowland of that area. And yeah, then yeah. later on, people reading this, or they could have, could, it could be, they even read the Continuum to Byzantia Arabica, which is the document you're talking about from 741. And there the, rec the record of Mecca is there, and they just applied that one to the, to the new Mecca. So we don't know. That's there's still off to be discovered. But this is exciting because what you're saying here is this supports what you were showing yesterday. Absolutely. And you can see here the the new Mecca is also mentioned on the map here. 
And it's, what's interesting is the, the uh, diagram or the, you know, the picture, I don't know if it's meant to be hills or whatever, but it's actually very similar. If you look at, uh, at both of them there, you have got um, hills around the, the center of the town. Whether that's significant or not, I don't know, but um, you see clearly that Mecca is way up there. What we would consider to be south, the map gives, it, gives the impression that it's in the northerly direction, but as we know, it's, uh, it's all the opposite direction. But um, yeah, I think it's um, it's interesting. Let's jump in there back. because that, let's yeah. jump in there because when you look at chapter forty-eight, verse twenty-four, the only reference to Mecca in the Quran, the only time that this is referred to, what does it say about Mecca? It's in a valley. Yeah, which supports also this notion that one of these could be uh, could be a uh, candidate. And like, if you look at it there, it says so much. The the person was a Muslim cartographer. It's it's like well into. Uh, the 12th century, probably it was probably done in the 1150s, perhaps, or even the 1160s. It so was well into the 12th century. And where does he think the most important place is in the Muslim world? It's not Mecca of the Hejaz, which is incredible. So this guy, when he, he drew the map, the very first thing he did was to mark Haran um, on the map, which is the location next to where Abraham was born. And I believe so his father's Torah and his his brother is Haran. So this is the brother of Abraham that's referred to in that same that same city. Yeah. Uh, here, here's what's fascinating. You're you're talking about the fact that the cartographer puts this right in the center. This is what always cartograph cartographers do, and this has been a real problem meeting with our world map that we use today. The world map that you use today, can you notice what's in the center of our world map? It's Europe. Because the yeah. European cartographers have always considered Europe to be the center of the world. And that's why everything is kind of shifted down this way. So we're looking at Europe as a center of the world. That has caused an enormous amount of anger amongst the Southern Hemisphere because Africa is, much, is squashed then and is much smaller. There is a new map that's come out, the Peters map. And the Peters map redirects where the world really is and pulls it back up towards the south, which elongates Africa so much so that Africa, in reality, it, you could fit four United States into Africa. That's how big it is. Enormous. Wow. In the same token, that's what they're doing here. Cartographers always put that which is the most important area of the world. In this case, historically, it would be Haran and Ur and uh, Edessa and these other names that are given to it. That puts them right the center of the world because that is where possibly it looks like Mecca could be. That's where also all these traditions seem to uh, be pointing to. And that seems to be where the Islamic tra later traditions, 9th and 10th century tra traditions, then took all that and put it down south. And as you showed in that earlier map, they went directly down south. You can see that line that goes straight down to that point where the upper arrow is now. Yeah, and it's interesting that Haran is also the, the, the name of the brother of Abraham. So this has got huge significance. Um, Islam is basically saying through this map, or, or at least the, the Muslim cartographer is saying in this map, this is where it all started. This is the, the beginning of our religion. He's not actually saying Mecca in the Hejaz, which is, is really startling. I, I, I was very surprised by this, that this late into their into their history that the memory of the old Mecca was still there, even though they had now um, not written the name Mecca on the old location, but they still retain that memory of Abraham's connection yeah. to that location. Yeah. Which is Mecca is still there on the map. Mecca is there on the map. Mecca is very, very well delineated, but that's not where the history begins. That's not where the most important area of their history is. And that's why it's in the center of the map. This is great stuff. Now, remember for those of you who are watching, do, do confront us, do uh, have your, put your opinion there. You have the description box, go down to the description box and say exactly what you think. Listen, we want to make sure that we are engaging with you. Mel will continue to read uh, your comments. And if there's others that have other cart cart or maps or cartographical um, uh, support for this, bring it in, bring it up and tell us because we do need to find out what the evidence is. We've always asked this. We need to go where the evidence leads us. And you might, some of you might say, well, yes, we are interpreting the evidence wrong. Why? Show us where. 
it seems to me that what Mel's trying to bring up and what Mel is finding here, it seems to me that this is exactly what you would expect. You would expect to see inscriptions. You would expect to see maps. You would expect to see buildings. You would expect to see also references in later years to where the importance of their history is, where the importance of their identity is. Looks like, Mel, you've come across a real bombshell. Well, the person that actually introduced it to you came across a real bombshell. Uh, that's what one of the things we've always said. The more we scratch, the more we find. The more we find, the more they whine. The more they whine, the more we shine. Oh, how sublime. God bless you. Thanks so much, Mel. This has been great. Sure. This has been fun. Let's see where it goes. All right. This is Mel and Jay. Over now. out.